Branch. One on one for Travis up top. Keith uh, out of that formation, but a good run this time by Owens. He's going to score. James Owens in for the touchdown from 16 yards out. Hit and drop. Woo! Looking to pass again. Round is out and sacked. Pulls it now. Shoots across the middle. Touchdown, Fairview. Right on the money, and the Rattlers are back. Flushed out of the pocket. Rattlers have a spot. Can we make the tackle? We do. Fires for the end zone. This one is picked off. That's around the first down. Move those chains. Touchdown, FAMU. Down to the five-yard line. Move those chains. It's a first down for Florida and m Fires. It's picked off. The Rattlers with 45 seconds left have shut the door. Hello and welcome to the Coach Joe Taylor Show. I'm Keith Miles, your host, along with the head rattler, Coach Joe Taylor. And Coach, just what the doctor ordered, the Rattlers came home to play Savannah State. And, uh, boy, things just seem to work out just fine in the friendly confines of Bragg Stadium. Well, that's the main thing, um, Keith, as you said. <clears throat> Excuse me. We uh, to get to be back in, uh, in Tallahassee, uh, in Bragg Stadium, and I'm uh, so glad to see so many uh, fans uh, out uh, and of course, the bands I thought were outstanding from Ricketts and also, uh, also from DRS. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you said, uh, big conference win. Uh, our destiny is still very much in our own hands. So uh, it was good to be back, rested, didn't have to worry about the airport this uh, this week. So great victory, Coach. Uh, the, a great turnout for our second home game. Only our second home game of the season. We made a joke about it. Savannah State had played twice in Tallahassee, right? And we've only played twice in yeah. Tallahassee. But a great turnout and tremendous support from the two high school bands, FAMU DRS and Rickards. They, it was a just tremendous show for it by them. Well, again, we have been through a murderous row, I said, in terms of, um, you know, your first six ball games, five on the road. Uh, you don't want to really put anybody through that. But our guys did not uh, complain. Uh, I thought we saw a lot of uh, energy. Uh, I thought we saw a lot more focus. And bodies that uh, have recovered uh, for so much travel. And as you look around the conference today, uh, a lot of interesting things happen. Uh, and good for us, you know, there's only two remaining teams now that's, un uh, that's undefeated. Mm -hmm. And we have to play both teams. So. Uh, we're looking forward to, again, being home next week, uh, but to be off the road and still have our own destiny uh, still within our hands. Uh, what a great uh, Saturday back here in Bragg. All right, Coach, we're going to come back and take a look at first half highlights of FAMU and Savannah State after this time out on the Coach Joe Taylor Show. I'm Mickey Clayton, Executive Director of the Randall Booster Club. The Randall Booster Club contributed $591,000 to the Athletic Department of Florida A&M University. Some of the things we were able to purchase this year was the Jumbotron, and we assisted with the scoreboard and the Al Lawson Center, and golf carts for our seasoned Rattler Booster supporters, pitching machine for the baseball team, the shooting machine for the basketball team. So the Rattler Booster program supports all athletic programs. Join the Booster Club. Call the Rattler Booster office at 850-224-6093. It's not... You've been involved in an accident. You feel like today is going to be a bad day. You have headaches, neck pain, back pain. Well, call us here at Tallahassee Accident and Rehab, where we have your neck and your back. Call me, Dr. Ways, at Tallahassee Accident and Rehab. We're located at 1711 South Gaston Street. Tallahassee Accident and Rehab, your local accident doctors. Call us at Tallahassee Accident and Rehab, where you control your case. We got your neck and your back. Welcome back to the Coach Joe Taylor Show. Coach, the Rattlers, and the Savannah State Tigers. And we talked earlier in the week, and though, although Savannah State was winless, you said don't be fooled by their record. This was a team that had some outstanding talent, and they flew through the football, and certainly they did that tonight. Well, I told Coach Davenport after the ball game how proud I was uh, and really impressed because uh, of all they've been through in terms of their travel uh, and playing you know, FBS uh, teams. Uh, they've had some injuries and they are a little bit young, mm -hmm. but they play hard. Uh, they play 60 minutes. And as a coach, uh, that's all you can ever hope for. Uh, so again, uh, they did fly around. 
uh, and we could see that on film. Bostic, the quarterback, mm -hmm. the junior, uh, local talent, outstanding athlete. And you saw he did some things against us. Mm -hmm. uh, just the sacks that will take away from his, you know, eventual yardage. But uh, he put, he tucked that ball and took off several times. And he threw some nice balls. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and again, their defense, uh, they're a little bit, uh, you know, more, I guess more juniors uh, on that side of the ball. But overall, I was really impressed. And that punter, I don't know, they must mm -hmm. have imported him just for the night because, uh, <laughs> you know, he was booming those things. Uh, so, again, uh, you know, they have a plan, a little bit young, but if they stay together, they're going to be a force to reckon with. All right, Coach, let's go to first-half highlights. It's FAMU and Savannah State. Savannah State won the toss, Coach, but they deferred to the second half, okay. so we get the football first. And, man, I tell you, it's been so long since we wore the green jerseys. <laughs> he was glad to just see us back in green. You don't know all week, uh, and especially yesterday morning, you know, to be able to get a little extra time to uh, take care of personal uh, family uh, needs was just so great, not just for myself, but the whole organization and we really needed that and coming out uh, you know coach Kershaw thought I had a real good plan uh, the emphasis of course I always tell people you don't get what you expect you get what you inspect mm -hmm. and we know that we needed to do some things in terms of uh, trying to create a more balance uh, in our, our attack and I thought we saw that today, uh, run and pass. Yeah, here's a big strike from Bostic to uh, Dylan Cook, his outstanding receiver. But we strip the football and get it right back. Yeah. We go up three to nothing, and here we go, come right back. This is Damian, and Damian tuck it, tucked it and, ran, and ran a little yeah. bit tonight. Well, too. this is the first time he's been healthy, and most the last two weeks we had to almost hand the ball off because he was not able to run because mm -hmm. of a groin situation. But this is the first time that he's a coach, uh, you know, we can run the, the whole play, in other words, read it. And if the defensive end crashes, he keeps it. And you'll see a couple of times tonight he kept for big yardage. Yeah, Chase Vonador gives us a 6 to nothing lead, Coach. It was a big night for Chase as well. Well, it was important to get him involved. I know at a certain time we probably could have called a fourth down play, but you want to uh, get that phase of the football game uh, really involved because as you continue to play, those special team phases really begin to show up more and more, and you want them to be effective. And, of course, as you said, Chase did a great job. Yeah, Savannah State comes down. They move the football, get a field goal. It's 6-3, to three, and here comes James Owens. Coach, you've been expecting this kind of explosion on a kickoff all season. Well, it's obvious he's got the speed, but he has to continue to work on the discipline. Mm -hmm. The first one, you know, he's just going to just go out there and run away from his blockers. And we just kind of uh, chastised him a little bit. So listen, you know, run where the blockers are. Uh, and then that's when you saw him be a lot more efficient. But here again is where we we're reading the option, the read option. And uh, because of the fact that we, uh, the quarterback can run, it's, it's a dual threat. And you don't ever know who's going to get the football because we don't know what the defense is going to do. But this is a great run uh, from Owens that uh, really, uh, again, got us on the board. And we kind of felt like it was going to eventually come and uh, I was glad to see those guys run as hard as they did. A 15-yard touchdown run for James. And Brandon Denmark, Coach, he had a phenomenal mm -hmm. night uh, defensively for you against Savannah Well, State. he's a transfer from the University of Illinois, but he's a local talent. Him and Terry Johnson are cousins. Uh, in fact, Rick has got a, a, a younger brother of his that showed off last night in the high school game. But, again, uh, he is. He's learning. He's more comfortable with the defense. He's under he's spending more time with Coach Holmes, and he's really settling down and uh, making a lot more plays because, again, he knows the uh, defense. All right, here we go. Great return by Linworth Lennon, and here's James Owens with a nice run after catch. And, again, Damian is in charge of the offense, and, Coach, he finds uh, Adamson mm -hmm. Felix in the scene yeah. for another big strike. Well, I thought we blocked better up front. Uh, we challenged the offensive line last week in our meeting on Sunday, and, Excuse me, they went to work, and uh, you saw the difference in terms of giving the quarterback more time. Um, and once Fleming, like I said, he's a threat, and a lot of times he's running, he's still looking for receivers downfield. Yeah, Chase with another field goal. That one, uh, 38 yards, Coach. And so, uh, again, our kicking game appears to be in really good hands with Chase Varnador. We're putting a little, uh, a little bit more time. Uh, we're adjusting our practices and uh, putting a little bit more time than two you know, the special team phases. But again, here's, uh, you know, Rocker really running a lot harder. Mm -hmm. um, he, they saw those guys out there. And see here, based on the defense, 
uh, Fleming did the right thing. He pulled it down and, uh, and mm -hmm. kept the ball. Uh, but I, again, this is the first time in three weeks we've been able to run the whole play. A great fake, too, Coach. Yeah. A lot of the defenders bid on the fake and open up the lane for, for yeah. Damian. And this is a great catch by Michael Etheridge. Well, a defensive end has to be very disciplined to stay home and protect his gap. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, they're going to lose their uh, discipline. We call it wildcatting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and try to go get the ball carrier instead of taking care of his area. And that's when the quarterback made a great read. Yeah, here's uh, another big play. This is Devin Roberts going to safety blitz coach coming in and uh, sacking uh, Antonio yeah. Bostic. And that's going to end the first half at 23-3. to A tremendous first half, Coach. And one of the things I know that uh, you were really proud of is you got back to Joe Taylor football <laughs> tonight, and that is uh, the ground game yeah. came alive. Well, it's about balance. You have to have it. Um, and, again, it was good to see us be able to go out and uh, those offensive linemen take on the challenge, uh, work on their technique just a little bit uh, harder, and then telling the backs, you know, that's not going to ever happen again. Yeah. So uh, I think Rocker had something like 171 yards. Yeah. But you're right, so good to see that. Yeah, Eddie told us in the postgame show that one of the offensive linemen came to him uh, uh, this week and said, you know, we feel like we let you down. It will never happen again. And, yeah. that, man, they really opened up some major holes for yeah. him tonight. Yeah, and that's what you want to see, um, you know, a team coming together, bonding. Uh, again, they've been through a lot. Uh, but they're still fighting, and as a coach, that's all you can really hope for. All right, 23-3, to that score at the half. Coach, let's come back and take a look at second-half highlights after this timeout on the Joe Taylor Show. Stay with us. program supports all athletic programs at the university. Join the Rattler Booster Club. It's not too late. Welcome back to the Coach Joe Taylor Show. Coach, it's an unusual season. The Marching 100, not part of the football season this year, but the Rickards High School Band and the FAMU DRS Band really put on a performance on Saturday night. Well, I think it's very smart that we are involving the community even more so. And as you have said, um, that's recruiting. Mm -hmm. uh, those young people come over and they perform, but then they see the atmosphere. They get caught up in it. They want to become a part of that. Mm -hmm. But we can't say enough about um, how, again, they put the time in. I understand they practice before school, after school. But I was really impressed coming back out. And one time, I forgot. If I didn't know it wasn't 100, I thought it was. <laughs> uh, but certainly I uh, understand that uh, they have a great connection in terms of uh, the director mm -hmm. uh, is an X 100 guy. Mm -hmm. And they did a great, fantastic job at halftime, Coach. I can tell you about it, okay? So <laughs> let's go to second half highlights. The Rattlers going to kick it off to Savannah State. They Remember, they deferred at the opening kickoff, so they'll get the ball to start the second half. And uh, you're going to see good kick coverage, and the Rattlers' defense just continue to elevate play here in the second half. Yeah, well, first of all, uh, I don't know why they deferred. I guess it's just a philosophy of his, but... Um you know, they uh, did. We did come back out and we kicked off to them. And I just told the defense, uh, you know, let's continue our ways with the three and zero out. And I thought that we really wasn't still having enough fun out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought a few minutes they went to an empty backfield on their offense, and a couple of receivers got open. Uh, but we made the adjustment at halftime. Uh, and then, of course, we, uh, you know, just had to be a little bit more disciplined. Mm -hmm. But I thought we came back out and we played more efficient. Mm -hmm. in the second half. I didn't, we didn't have those penalties that we had. I had we talked about that at halftime. But here, of course, um, you know, playmakers, we're putting the ball in the playmakers' hands, and 
uh, you know, move. In fact, a lot of yard is up and down the field, but this week we're better finishing drives. Mm -hmm. That's Lenworth Lennon with a big catch there. This is a fantastic run by James Owens. He's going to take this to the house coach, but I think this one comes back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They uh, said number 81, um, Dwayne Harvey was holding. Uh, but still, you know, we, we stay in our tree. We don't lose focus, and we still work our way back and get into the end zone. And here's the one that, uh, you know, he looks like a real athlete there himself. And he's, again, you can tell he's healthy uh, because he's not limping. And, uh, you know, he's taking his medicine. And you can tell he's getting a lot stronger, which is great. Yeah, Damian takes it in on a seven-yard touchdown run. After the great catch and uh, run after catch by Linworth to set that touchdown up, and now you'll see the defense just really begin to tighten up. This is a great pick by uh, Terry Johnson. Terry yeah. now with three picks on the year, yeah. and Marvin Ross and Devin Roberts would both have two. Yeah. So the secondary is really stepping up. And I went over to Terry and said, great job. Uh, they got down there because he lost coverage a little bit and mm -hmm. let the guy get behind him. But uh, that's a great way to make it up. And now Jordan Stanley, coach, yeah. running strong yeah. coming in. Uh, and he's been kind of banged up, so it's good to see him get yeah, some reps. Yeah, been banged up a little bit, but uh, another local kid from uh, – FAMU, DRS, and, um, you know, doing a great job. And I thought we came in uh, and put it, like I said, we weren't trying to run the score up or mm -hmm. anything. We wanted everybody to play because everybody practiced. But I thought our backup, Tyler Bass, yeah. uh, was a little bit lethargic, uh, didn't have the energy that you're looking forward to. But, you know, he kept fighting. Um, and, of course, we talked to him a little bit about as a leader, it's important to, you know, let's see some more energy out there couple of delay of games, but this is a nice pass here mm -hmm. uh, to Dennis Hall. Actually, no, that's uh, Adamson. Adamson. Yeah, yeah Adamson. And, uh, yeah, Tyler, and that should have been a, a catch right there, though. Yeah, a couple of guys called when he came to the sideline, wanted to pat him on the head. I said, son, <laughs> uh, you don't get many. Uh, take advantage of it. Yeah. All right, uh, that was uh, Thomas Jacobs, the punter for Savannah State. He did a fine job, Coach. We're watching on film, and I don't know who this guy is, but, you know, it's just like everything else, and we keep telling these guys we don't need to keep learning the same lesson. When that orange and green show up on the other side, it brings the best out of everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, so we expect that, and uh, that's what we get all the time. But, uh, here, you know, we got the backups in, and uh, that's another – run pass option that uh, you know we have on the play uh, and we just count the numbers you know uh, if, if the numbers are suitable in the box then we'll run it if not we'll throw the little bubble pass mm -hmm. but um, Tyler's doing a good job here, and it's important to do that you know you don't ever know when he's gonna have to be out there mm -hmm. hopefully not but uh, you never know but that's uh, good <coughs> reps for the backup uh, and not just at quarterback, but some other positions as well. Yeah, that's how it ends 44 to 3, coach. A big victory over Savannah State, just what the doctor ordered, really, uh, for a Rattler team that just really needed a win. But most importantly, it was a conference victory. Well, that's the key. Uh, it keeps you on pace, uh, keeps you on track for uh, continue to have your own destiny in your own hands. All right, Coach, we're going to come back as we go to break. We'll take a look at the final statistics, and we'll also come back and tell you about the players of the game, and then we'll tell you about uh, what all happened in the MEAC this weekend that sets the Rattlers up in pretty good position. So stay with us. Joe Taylor Show will be right back. been involved in an accident, you feel like today is going to be a bad day, you have headaches, neck pain, back pain, well call us here at Tallahassee Accident and Rehab where we have your neck and your back. Call me, Dr. Ways, at Tallahassee Accident and Rehab. We're located at 1711 South Gaston Street, Tallahassee Accident and Rehab, your local accident doctors. Call us at Tallahassee Accident and Rehab where you control your case. We got your neck and your back. I'm Mickey Clayton, Executive Director of the Randall Booster Club. The Randall Booster Club contributed $591,000 to the Athletic Department of Florida a and University. Some of the things we were able to purchase this year was the Jumbotron, and we assisted with the scoreboard and the Al Lawson Center, and golf carts for our seasoned Rattler Booster supporters, pitching machine for the baseball team, the shooting machine for the basketball team. So the Rattler Booster program supports all athletic programs. Join the Booster Club. Call the Rattler Booster office at 850-224-6093. It's not too late.
90.5 The Flavor Station, always represent that real hip-hop and R&B. Sean D is in the building to that 7 o'clock hour. Welcome back to the Coach Joe Taylor Show. Let's take a look at this week's Players of the Game. On offense, coach is Eddie the Rocket Rocker. 17 carries, 171 yards, one touchdown, 33 long, 10.1 yards per carry. Mm -hmm. That's Joe Taylor football. Well, I'm, <clears throat> I'm so glad to see him uh, do that, too, because, boy, did he have a great week of practice. Uh, and he felt bad last week uh, that we didn't do more in terms of having a balance. But 171 yards, that says a lot for not just him, but for the offensive line. On defense, coach, it's Brandon Denmark, six total tackles, four solo, two and a half sacks, four tackles for loss, and one forced fumble. He was on fire tonight. Well, we're doing a lot of different things with him, uh, Coach Holmes. First of all, he's coming in and spending a lot more time understanding uh, <clears throat> what we're trying to get done on defense. Sometimes you see him with um, in a three-point stance, which gives us a four-man four, four -man front. Mm -hmm. You see him at the outside backer. You see him at the inside back. And so a guy with, you know, he's 6'4", about 240 and run a 4'4". Uh, and when he really gets comfortable, uh, this guy, he can get from point A to point B pretty quickly. And I think that's what you saw tonight. Special teams coaches Chase Vonador, three field goals, 27, 21, and 38 yards, five point after touchdowns, all of them good. Chase is really coming into his own as our place kicker. Well, uh, we work a little extra on it in practice uh, because, like I said, as you continue to move forward, you don't ever know when that's going to be the difference. Um, there's always four or five plays in every game that decides the outcome. Um, Usually those four play, or five plays are found in special teams. And we just feel that um, his accuracy, his confidence uh, has really heightened. And, you know, he's going to be effective uh, if we continue to move forward uh, and do what we need to do. Coach, uh, some things happened in the MEAC this weekend that really helped the Rattlers out. Howard went to A&T and lost. Uh, North Carolina Central continued to win. South Carolina State lost. The Rattlers now in a tie for second place. Uh, and all we got to do is keep winning. <laughs> well, and that's exactly right. Uh, <clears throat> the two teams that are tied for first place, mm -hmm. North Carolina Central and Bethune, Bethune was off today. And, of course, Central beat Morgan, who was undefeated. Mm -hmm. and that really was the important game because we don't play Morgan. Mm -hmm. But we do play the final two, which is Bethune and North Carolina Central. In fact, they play North Carolina Central and Bethune play two weeks from today. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of them, by the time they get to us, will already have a loss. But uh, it's just so um, – I'm just excited for the guys because out of all they've been through uh, with this murderous role, uh, their destiny is still right here in their own hands because when out, you may act champs. Yeah. Let's go to break. We'll take a look at the MEAC scoreboard and the MEAC standings, and we'll come back with some final thoughts and get ready for South Carolina State after this timeout from the post show tickets. program supports all athletic programs at the university. Join the Rattler Booster Club. It's not too late. 
Introducing a mobile application that can open up an entire new world for the orange and green faithful with the ability to check out the latest in-campus news, events, athletic scores, and much, much more. Specifically designed for the family. Whether it's linking to your class courses from your mobile device, looking through maps to find specific buildings on campus, or just having some fun looking through uploaded videos and photos, a great addition to your mobile family student lifestyle. Get your family app today! The flavor station always represent that real hip hop and RB. Sean D is in the building to that 7 o'clock hour. Welcome back to Coach Joe Taylor. So, Coach, up next is your good friend, Buddy mm. Pugh, and those South Carolina State Bulldogs. It's yeah. always a scrap when the Rattlers and Bulldogs get together. Well, we talked to Buddy last week and because uh, <clears throat> he called me because he asked me about Dell State. Were mm -hmm. they that good? And I told him, yes, uh, because they have a senior team. Mm -hmm. And Elko, mm -hmm. uh, their quarterback, uh, he's, doing a, he's a senior. Mm -hmm. He's doing a fine job. And then he asked me about some guys on my team. Where did you get that number two from? Mm -hmm. Well, at the bottom line, uh, Buddy, you know, very unusual to see them in this situation. But, you know, they started off with Murder's Row. I mean, they, uh, Arizona, Texas A&M, mm -hmm. uh, Circle City Classic, they had to bus up to Indianapolis. They busted Delaware last week uh, or this week. And next week, I understand, they're going to bust here. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, again, uh, but normally, this is not where you see it, Buddy Pugh's team. They will come here uh, energized, of course, because, you know, it's still about pride, trying to finish out strong. And, you know, he's trying now to find a way to uh, find a way to at least have a 6-5 and five season. Uh, and that's going to be important for him this week. So they will be fighting. But in our situation, uh, Keith, it's still a conference game. Mm -hmm. Uh, out of all that we've been through, we told the kids last night, adversity, let's embrace it because that's where true substance is developed in a man. It's when adversity takes place. We're going to use all that we've gone through to have the strength and resolve to continue to work hard, continue to be motivated uh, because what we are talking about is realistic. Uh, so it's a conference game. We're home. We're arrested. Uh, and we look for the community to come back out. Yeah, we need the Rattler fans to pack Bragg Stadium on Saturday night to help the Rattlers knock off those South Carolina State Bulldogs. And, of course, we'll have all of the highlights for you right here next week on the Coach Joe Taylor Show. We'll see you then.